Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, dear seekers. Thank you for joining us for G2G's second event, The Vessel Purifying Within. We will start promptly. We will start now. <laughs> but before that, here are just a few announcements from us. As we wait for others to stream in, a gentle reminder to mute your microphone and switch on your camera if your environment allows for it, and it is convenient for you to do so to allow the session to run smoothly, inshallah. Lastly, kindly note that this event will be recorded. Thank you. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillahi Rahmani Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Allahumma Salli wa Salli wa Barik ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sabi ajmain. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassiri li amri wa hlul uqlatan min lithani yafqahu kawli Rabbi yassir wa la tuassir ya kareem wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sabi wa sallam wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alim We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and send blessings and salutation upon our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his entire household, his companions, those who followed him and helped him in his faith we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every single one of us and to grant us goodness fi dunya wal akhirah. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Let us open this gathering by reciting Surah Al-Fatiha as a gift to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let us also recite Surah Al-Fatiha with the intention that tonight's event will go smoothly and that this online gathering of a community who is in constant remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be blessed by him, inshaAllah. على هذه النيات ولكل نيات صالحة ببركة أم القرآن الفاتحة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان Dear fellow schoolmates and guests of this blessed gathering, allow me to begin with the most humble greeting of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to our second session for this academic year. Just to introduce myself, my name is Shaka Ali, and I'll be your MC for this evening, inshallah. For those joining us for the first time, allow me to share a little bit about what G2G is all about. Guide to Goodness is a ground up initiative that provides regular classes, help which focuses on the sciences of Islamic spirituality and Islamic sacred knowledge. G2G envisions itself to be a guide to goodness to all and aims to uplift our community with Islamic spirituality. G2G returns once again for the fourth year with the team, The Voyage. <clears throat> for this iteration, we would like to draw analogies from speaking to reflect on the elements of seeking direction overcoming challenges and the overall journey that a seeker would go through in order to attain a destination that elevates our spirit together and remembering that this journey of striving for excellence is a lifelong one. The series hopes to provide a practical yet intellectual framework for seekers to get started on their spiritual journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the context and life of a Singaporean Muslim community. Our sessions will be delivered by our, our esteemed respected teacher, Ustaz Dr. Muhammad Faisal Muhammad Hassan. Ustaz Faisal graduated from the International Islamic University, Malaysia, with an honors degree in philosophy and received his Master in Arts and the Interna from the International Institute of Islamic Thought and Civilization. He also holds a Master of Science in International Relations from the S. Rajaratnam School of International Studies and TU Singapore, where he is currently a research fellow at the International Center for Political Violence and Terrorism Research. His research, research interests lie in terrorist rehabilitation, counter ideology, and community engagement. Ustaz is one of the pioneer volunteer counselors of the Religious Rehabilitation Group RRG and is also a member of the RRG Secretariat. Tonight's topic is entitled The Vessel Purifying Within. Following from last week's introduction to the three dimensions of Islam, fiqh, tawhid, and tasawwuf, tonight's session is invite us to delve deep to delve further into appreciating tasawwuf as the science of spirituality in Islam. We also intend to explore how tasawwuf is not only re relevant, but essential to nurturing our souls. To do this, we shall attempt to tap on the teachings of some of the spiritual in inheritors of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Before we begin with Ustaz's lecture, um, let, us, let us open with a short recitation of Istighfar. The NUS Kasida Bros will be leading us in the recitation of the Istighfar. 
Most of us may already be familiar with this particular style of recitation, so feel free to recite along with us. So without further ado, uh, let us invite Gassi Dabros. <clears throat> اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله استغفر الله رب البرايا استغفر الله من الخطايا استغفر الله رب البرايا استغفر الله من الخطايا ربي زيدني علما نافعا ووافقني عملا مقبولا وهاتني رزقا واسعا وتوب علينا توبة نصوحا وتوب علينا توبة نصوحا أستغفر الله رب البرايا أستغفر الله من الخطايا استغفر الله رب البرايا استغفر الله من الخطايا ربي زيدني علما نافعا ووافق لي عملا مقولا وهاب لي رزقا واسعا وتوب علينا توبة نصوحا وتوب علينا توبة نصوحا أستغفر الله رب البرايا استغفر الله من الخطايا استغفر الله رب البرايا استغفر الله من الخطايا ربي زيدني علما نافعا ووافق لي عملا مقبولا وهب لي رزقا واسعا وتوب علينا توبة نفوها وتوب علينا توبة نفوها استغفر الله رب البرايا استغفر الله من الخطايا استغفر الله رب البرايا استغفر الله من الخطايا ربي زيدني علما نافعا ووافقني عملا مقبولا وهب لي رزقا واسعا وتوب علينا توبة نصوحا وتوب علينا توبة نصوحا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله <تصفيق> الحمد لله Thank you Kassida Bros for the recitation 
allow me a moment to surely reflect about his Iqfar in general. <clears throat> Sometimes in our attempts to overcome our sins and the guilt that accompanies them, I feel we may take a slightly debilitating perspective on it. I also feel that beyond the regret that we feel, which is necessary, we should also look to how we can move forward and empower ourselves. Let's take a look at a short hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam related by Imam Tirmidhi radiallahu an. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, be conscious of Allah wherever you are. Follow the bad deeds with a good one to erase it and engage others with beautiful character. And in another hadith, the noble prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, Allah Almighty records both good, good actions and bad actions. If anyone intends to perform a good action and does not do it, Allah records a completed good action for him. If he intends to do it and actually does do it, Allah writes down 10 good actions for him or 700 or many more. From these two hadith, we may observe how vast the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And I feel he makes it so easy for his servants to move on from their past selves. I also feel we can realize how our Islamic tradition is one of empowerment and not one that is burdensome. Those who make mistakes are never turned away. In fact, some of our scholars have also mentioned that the path, the path of Tawbah is not merely about seeking forgiveness, but also about turning back to him no matter how many times we have, we have to do that. We shall now move on to the main part of our program. Throughout the event, should you have any questions, please feel free to use the chat function to post your questions. Just to note, Ustaz may be addressing some of your questions somewhere in the middle of the session. So if you have any, do not hesitate to just post them in the chat first. Subsequent questions will be addressed at the end of the sessions as per usual, meaning to say we will be having two Q&A segments, inshallah. Without further ado, may I call upon Ustaz Faisal to deliver his lecture. Ustaz. سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إلهي أنت مقصودي ورضاك مطلوب يعطني محبتك ومعرفتك أهلا برادس السفرس الإسلام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله الحمد لله وفرس الله سبحانه وتعالى that we are able to meet again for the second week of the second session of the series uh, being organized by Guide to Goodness. And I'm, I'm happy today because I have some friends who are with me to accompany me throughout this lonely journey together. So with me today, there's Brother Anas, Brother Zaki, Sister Matira, Sister Nadia. So to all of you guys who are over there, let's start by Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. We are, what we're going to do today, as mentioned previously in the last session, we have given an overview of Islamic spirituality and the roots of Islamic intellectual tradition. So today, inshallah, we will dwell into specifically the topic of at the tasawwuf We have given some understanding of the origins of the tasawwuf the last session. So today, I will start by introducing one of the greatest exponent of the tasawwuf or Sufism in the figure of uh, Imam Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Muhammad al-Ghazali. Imam al-Ghazali is popular within Islamic tradition due to many aspects of his contributions to our Islamic intellectual tradition. He is a faqih. He is also a philosoph. He also writes on diverse topics, 
within the Islamic tradition. And he also is a Sufi. Among his great books from the different sciences that he represented are books that became and are currently magnum corpus in our Islamic intellectual tradition. Among others, Al-Wasid in Fiqh. Among others, Tahafut Al-Falasifah in Philosophy. Among others, his autobiography, Al-Munqis Min Al-Talal. Among others, in Tasawuf, Lahya Ulumiddin. And many, many, many more books. There are even books that are discovered, manuscripts that are recently discovered, attributed to the works of Imam al -Ghazali. In our time, where we are digitally connected, there's a website, alghazali.org, A-L-G-H-A-Z-A-L-I.org, that, that provides a, a good collection of all the works of al -Ghazali and uh, which we can easily access for public consumption. So some of his texts, some of his books are available online. So that could be a good resource for all of us to, to read from the works of Imam al-Ghazali. More importantly, Imam al-Ghazali's work has been translated into many different languages. And we are lucky within our Malay Peninsula, Al-Ghazali has become one of the figures that have been referred by our scholars for almost 500 to 600 years. So the books by Al-Ghazali in Arabic or in Persia has already been translated into the Malay language. Even Al-Hiyya al, al has been translated into the Malay language. So there's no reason for us not to read. Within the English uh, language tradition, uh, Al-Ghazali has received great attention, especially from academicians who have continuously written on Al-Ghazali and analyzes his works. Al-Ghazali's work, book two has been translated into English, especially by Indian scholars and currently by scholars in the West. So Alhamdulillah, the resources that we have in our hands, we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the doors for us to, to read his text. So today, I would like to introduce one of his manuscripts, one of his book that is readily available. And it is just a small letter. This book, this Risala, was written by Al Ghazali based upon a request by one of his students who had lived with Al Ghazali and wanted some guidance from his teacher that would become a piece of advice that he will hold on to throughout his life. The greatness of al Azali is, in reply to the request from his student, al Azali wrote a letter which ended up becoming a book. That's the magnificence of scholars. And they reply in the form of a letter the worth of it became a book and manuscript that, re that remains for almost a thousand years until today. So the text was originally written, because it is a letter, it was originally written in Persian. So it is not written originally in Arabic. It was then translated into Arabic and through that, the Islamic world has received it and has translated it into many languages. 
including English, including the Malay, and it, it has been binded and made into a, a book. So it is called Ayyuhal Walad. The, the book is called Ayyuhal Walad Al Muhib. Ayyuhal Walad Al Muhib. But it is commonly known as Ayyuhal Walad. Ayyuhal Walad Al Yuhal Walad Al Muhib means Oh my beloved son. Oh, oh, oh my beloved child. So he was addressing this need from his student. We have shared the text. Huh? We have shared the text here. So within the chat, you could find the text. I have been made the Arabic text. So what we will do today, as promised, we will take excerpts from it. I have chosen one particular which, if it's in Arabic, it's on the third page. But in this, eh, somebody has to find it. Eh? So it's just three lines. So we can go slowly there. Eh? It's fast. It's too fast for my eyes. Okay, wait, wait. Okay, okay, we go down now. Okay, okay. Okay, respond to the letter, okay. Once, once, once. Wait, wait, wait. So, Bunyal Islam, okay, go down. Inna, inna Rahmatullah. Inna Rahmatullah. Before it is a, is a, a short poem, just two lines in Persian. Sahrul Ayun. Kayisu, okay, okay, Talab. Kayisu, okay, good, huh? Okay, go up, go up, go up. 17, okay, okay. 17 is. Okay, this page. In this particular text, are we, being, are we able to see the text? We are able to see it. So Al Ghazali says, Aish ayyuhal walad, Aish ma shi'ta. Yes. Aish ma shi'ta, fa innaka mayyitun. Wa ahbib man shi'ta, fa innaka mufarikuhu. So, in this English translation, they have transliterated it. Yeah? So, it's difficult to read. It becomes more difficult to read. And so, basically, it says, there's three parts of it. First is, Aish ma shi'ta fa innaka mayyitun. The first part. The second part is Wa ahbib man shi'ta fa innaka mufarikuhu wa amal ma shi'ta fa innaka majziyumbi. There's a different version here, to jazabi. So we follow the text. Huh? The Arabic text says majziyumbi. But the meaning is the same. Fa innaka majziyumbi. So what does it mean? How do they translate it? Spend your life the way you like, but keep in mind that one day you will die. 
Do we have that? Uh, can you put that down? Okay. Well, this is a good thing when you have uh, friends around. A lot of work can be done. Uh, okay, this is okay. So we'll base upon this. Okay. So Imam Al Ghazali, first we need to understand. First we need to understand. <clears throat> First, we need to understand that when Al Ghazali wrote this line, "Aish ma shi'ta fa inna kamayyitun, wa ahbib man shi'ta fa inna kamufariquhu, wa amal ma shi'ta fa inna kamajziyum bi." When he wrote this line in this particular letter that he was sending to his to his student, he did not. Mentioned in the letter that this was a hadith. Yeah, that we need to understand. So when we look at intellectual tradition, when we read texts, the important thing of, of reading texts, we first need to understand that the writer sometimes do not provide footnotes to the sources that he obtained from. Because of the state of the 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 final product, because the letter the final product is a letter, a letter does not include footnotes. Eh? You don't need that because it's a personal thing. Today we don't write letters, but today we write WhatsApp, right? So when you quote when you quote something, you don't need to reference it because it's very personal. A personal letter means Al Azali. Knows this child, this student, eh? and this student knows the teacher. Eh? So, between a teacher and a student, the formality of uh, the technicalities of academic writing is lost because the touch is onto the hearts of the reader. Eh? It's not upon the need to justify the 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 truth of the source. So this we need to understand when we read Al Ghazali, eh? because Al Ghazali wrote many different types of writings addressing different target audiences. So this is important and a big lesson for us to understand that in every writing of us, it will be differentiated by depending on who we are addressing it to. Eh? So this is one big lesson that we receive from Ayyuhal Walad when we want to take it as a, a book that has all its uh, references, it will defeat its purpose. Because the purpose of this is that it is a personal letter to a, to a student. Uh, so, but for when it reaches our shores, which is like 900 years after, or 1000 years after, we are people who hopes to obtain the sources from where Al Ghazali obtained it, because of at least two main reasons. One, there are voices out there that doubts the authenticity of some of the hadiths of Al Ghazali. So, due to that, there is a effort by scholars. Who wants to determine the sources that are really obtained? That can be left to the scholars of Hadith. Uh, that is their job. They have to do that. So we are lucky enough today in our time when this kind of letters receive, re receive within our shores, and it has been compiled in different within different publications by different public authors and editors. Several editors have included the source of such hadith. So we will now have already have footnotes. So our footnotes will today help us in understanding this source. One of the ability of our time today is to realize that these three lines that Al-Ghazali mentioned in this letter was actually attributed 
to Jibril alaihi salam. So this is the greatness of the and the richness of Al Ghazali's resource at the time. Eh? We have to go back to Sahih Bukhari and others to determine whether this is a hadith or whether this is a saying of Al Ghazali himself. If we do not have that source, we would say, "Ayuhal walad, aishma shaita fa inna kamaitan." It's as if Al Ghazali is the first one to mention this to the to the student. But due to our technology today and scholarly work, Alhamdulillah, we're able to see that Al Ghazali, in many of his texts, referred to our primary sources. That is the Quran and the Hadith. So this particular uh, advice is a Hadith that is reported. And with a category of Hassan means it is verified and it's accepted within the Hadith tradition that Jibril, the Malaikatul Malaika Jibril, had one came to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he proclaimed and advised Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam on these three general advices. But if we were to dwell deeper into it. It becomes some sort of a signpost for us to live our life. Eh? So Ayuh al Walad is a text that Al Ghazali wrote as a letter from the standpoint of a Sufi, a Tasawwuf teacher, advising his student. So this is not a fake text. This is not a text on Aqidah. This is a personal letter. But the, the message that is personal becomes a message from the heart of the teacher to the heart of the student. So the first line says, Aish. Aish means live. Live life lah. Aish. Aish ma shikta. However you please, as you please. Live as you please. Fa innaka mayitun. But indeed, you need to realize that in actual fact, you are a corpse. What does it mean? In actual fact, is that we are heading towards death. So you can leave the ability that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has given us the opportunity to live as a human being. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has created us with a vision of what we need to perform in this life today. What is the goal of our life? So Jibril says, and Al Ghazali quoted in his book, and advise his his student, live as you like. So don't take it from a negative standpoint. Eh? So read it as in parts. Eh? First, Aishma Shaita, live as you please. Live means live first. Eh? So the, the idea here is not to elevate the idea of death first. It's about elevation of optimizing life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Optimization of life. Inshma shi'ata. Live as you please. Because it is a gift, a gift from the creator who has created life for us. So take life as a whole and do not waste time. Because life is a journey against time. Aish my shaita. Understanding the complexity of life becomes the journey of life itself. So, my shaita means your ability to expand on the life and time that has been given to you will affect how you become as a human being itself. If you are into studies, if you keep on studying, you will learn more. Right? If you if you take life as as a as a stage, as a madrasa, or as a university, life becomes a living university. You keep on learning and learning because that's the truth. The thing that we we can learn from life itself both from texts that have been written about life or from 
life itself from the signs that have been given to us or from occurrences in our life itself that itself is the greatest teacher for every human being life is a teacher so we are all students of life the more we learn the more we explore the unlimitedness of this time that Allah has given us. So how do we aish ma shi'ta? How do we live as we please? First, we act as students of life. Students of life, we do not declare that we know everything about life. We stay humble to believe that there's always avenues that we have not even seen or taste or witness. So there's always boundaries to explore. But how do we do that? Because we have faith, we have Al-Islam, we have parameters. We have Sharia, we have Tariqah, the way, we have Hakikah, the reality, and then we have Ma'rifah, the, the knowing. So that is the basic process of living understood by Sufis and through the learn, learning of the soul. There's a projection of the process of life based upon Sharia first, that is the law, jurisprudence, the act of what should be performed, what should not be performed, what, what is halal, what is haram, what is mutashabiha, what is sunnah, what is wajib. What's the five basic wajib, sunnah? What's the three more? Haram, very good. Haram, makro, and the final one? Mubah, right? Okay. So this needs to become the basic foundation of us choosing what is permissible and what is not permissible. And it's not as simple as black and or white. Islam has determined that in life, there's at least five ways of looking at permissibility or impermissibility. And so never fall into the trap of black is either you or me. It's either us versus them. This is not the mentality in Islam. Islam looks at things as at least being divided into five aspects. The wajib. What does it mean, wajib? What does wajib mean? We forgot the basic. We talk about the soul. Wajib semua lupa. What is wajib? Obligatory. Must be done. Eh? If you, what is the basic uh, fake understanding of wajib? If you perform it, you will obtain I already forgot what is wajib. If you perform wajib, what do you what do you gain? Pahala. Yeah, Malay juga pahala. Rewards. What's the rewards? Ah, eh? pahala. Very interesting. I want to ask you. Pahala. The word pahala itself is from where? It's from where? You see, in the Quran, there is not no term of pahala. The term pahala, the Malay term pahala, is not a Malay, it's not an Arabic term. But the concept is Islamic. Eh? This we need to understand. The beauty of our Malay culture is that he, it has introduced the idea of dosa and pahala. Eh? Pahala is, what's the English translation? Rewards. Rewards. No, rewards doesn't sound like it does not give us the, the essence of divinity. And when you say pahala, there's essence of divine. It comes from the divine. Rewards can be from everyone. Hey, rewards. So I got rewards because I got number one. Father rewarded me. Right? There's no pahala. Right? Pahala means it is divine. It is something that the religion asks you to perform. And then if you do perform, you obtain pahala. You obtain what? Rewards. Okay, like, okay, then dosa, dosa is not in the the term, eh? the term, eh? the term, the 
the the semantics the word itself is not in the quran dosa but the idea is in the quran what is the idea in the quran of what okay what is in english dosa sin sin eh? you see you don't get it right dosa is not only sin dosa is a result of sinning right because pahala is something that you get because you do good kan dosa is something that you get because you do you do bad dosa no nanti gitu kan that means you you have tainted yourself at the same time due to that pain you obtain darkness ah jadi dia bila okay okay so pahala dosa concept is actually a sang sanskrit term right so this itself the word pahala and dosa shows the magnitude of the evolution of the malay mind because we started i mean if i say malay it means our region eh yeah? it can be indian you can be arab you can but when you live within this region this evolution you need to understand this is when you study tafsir and you want to do uh, contextualization of of the quran you need to understand where you are to understand the text eh so this is important for you to know the history of the place that you are in so allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in mecca revelations were different in medina it was different why because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is teaching rasulullah adaptability in different contexts so today we need to understand that because our time is a covid-19 era the new norm right we have never understood mass before kan okay. dulu there was a cartoon mass you guys have ever seen it if not your time ah huh? well i will <laughs> so mass the mass you can watch lah like, hollywood movie mass jim carrey right there was this yeah, mass something lah shaukat you go and find shaukat movie you recommend them <laughs> so that was pre covid era Right. but now mass has become a part of our life right when you go out from your house you enter into the lift you forgot to wear your mask everybody will look at you right today i forgot to bring my mask everybody was looking at me. Like, why so now i realize it's my mask <laughs> but that's the part of life it changes due to many different factors we're lucky enough to be in time It is so difficult, but it is teaching us one of the biggest lessons of our time is the ability to adapt and to change, which is part of the Islamic message: hmm? adaptability and change. So when we talk about contextualization of texts, this is important that we understand where we are. The use of pahala and dosa just now, the 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 Malays started. with being a a community that believe in animism animism you know animism what is animism very good so they believe in alam you know alam alam is a, the environment so environment the spirits the plants as nature as fishes that so we are, we started them from animism then we were introduced into the idea of hinduism the region of hinduism from all the different spirits the different nature that we have met we saw representation of god in all these differences so there's a lot of god right idols and all right that is a an appreciation of the different uh, essence of life that that community saw and so due to the need to appreciate eh the milk to appreciate the 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 resources that help in their life so this malay community adopted it eh then after that the process of time evolution of time this community entered into a phase when they have understood the role of all these different essences of life and they were in search of a greater power a greater power that provides these essences eh so they found 
before they found first the first process they found buddhism in buddhism they found the nothingness nirvana they found that there's enlightenment there's an ability to detach yourself from all creations so there's peace eh? so we entered into that that phase then after that islam came eh? when islam came the peace that was shared they understood there was a giver of the peace so the idea of he the oneness of god so the beauty of the evolution of this malay uh, of the malay community today which started from then uh, talking about thousands of years of evolution of the community uh, until today when we grasp into this islamic faith that came about 600 years ago into our shores they adapted easily without any wars because they understood the spiritual connectedness that islam provided for their hearts that was continuously searching for this truth so they found that the truth that represented peace that represented the great resources that they have found that represented the spirits and others are actually allah la ilaha illallah and the messenger that brought this to them is muhammadur rasulullah so it completes the community so when you want to define malay malayness you can run away from the fact that there is an element of faith so it's not only about uh budaya culture it is also about the faith and the beauty of the malay understanding of the faith is that culture and religion has been forged into its practical life so when you wear your baju kurung for example eh yeah, so they say this this one tiga butang lima butang all these things those are symbol symbols of faith the islam rukun rukun lima lah rukun islam all these things and all these things are so you need to also do not run away from the reservoir of knowledge that is found within our culture sometimes today when we reach our time today we have sort of differentiate or put a line a eh, cross between what is cultural and what is religious eh? that is set up because you will run away from the reality of who you are because men and women humans has been created by Allah in the best form and eh? when it is in the best form means the ability of this human being is that it needs different abilities for it to optimize itself if you just put into it faith it's not enough because it has other needs so at least we have what are we made up of what are the qualities of a human being number one is what what are you a human right i am a human right So when we talk about being a human what do we consist of? Macam bala. Oh she wants to go into rope. Huh? Basic first. Basic is what we have what we call our senses. Right? Senses. All of us have our, have our senses. At least we have five senses, right? What are the five senses? Sight. Hearing. Hearing. Smell. Taste. Taste. Touch. Touch. Huh? This was created by Allah. Laqad khalaqna al-insana fi ahsani taqwim. We have indeed created man in the best form. Al-insan not man, humans in the best form. Means the best form for Allah who is al-ghani, it cannot be simple. It cannot be simple. If today we go into looking at the richness of the the bees or the ants or even the lizard right the texture of the lizard eh, where can we buy that of the skin which we can touch right but that texture is was created by Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala right now we're talking about plastic eh when we touch lizard right you see mashallah so you think plastic is a new thing no 
because that creator of plastic, whoever had invented that thing that has caused a lot of destruction for us today, right? Maybe he got his ilham from looking at the lizard. Uh. We don't know lah. Uh. This is science. You guys uh, know more about that. So we need to understand when such a small little being has great embodiment of how it has been created, its physical structure that we're able to see, what more the best of creation that is human being, right? So we need to, when we say Aish Masheta, means we need to understand the greatness of this life is in the aspect of how we have entered into this life, the being. Okay, so the first part is senses. Number two, what is number two? What is our number two? Yeah. Knowledge. So where does it seat knowledge? In the mind, akal, true. So knowledge is a is a, a thing that is added on to the human being. Put it in simple terms. Eh? So, but why? Because human being has that ability to understand. But before, if Al Ghazali he 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 placed it knowledge uh, akal as number three. Number two for Al Ghazali first is senses. Number two for Al Ghazali is what he calls tamiz. Tamiz. T a m y i z. You know, you always enter into a phase of mumayyiz before balir. What is mumayyiz in fiqh? Very good. That is what mumayyiz is. The ability to differentiate between what is right and what is wrong. That's why there's hadith that says, when your child is, uh, enters into the age of seven, it is okay for you to... Uh, be careful lah, uh, reading that hadith. Some people say, slap, boom. Mana boleh. And Rasulullah never slap anybody to pray. Never, never. never. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam never even forced people to pray. And so when you read hadith also, you need to understand the meaning and the context of the terms that are used in the Quran, in the, in the hadith. What is meant is that you have to show to the child because he has reached that, that moment in his life that his mind is transforming himself to understand that there is good and bad, you need to show to the child that prayer is good. If you are able to show to the child that prayer is good, you don't even need to be angry to him. If you are able to show the child, but then the child say, no la, prayer not important, la. playing, what, what game now they play? Online? I don't want to forget. Uh. No, what's the, you, you guys, NUS don't play games uh, anymore. Yeah, PUBG. <laughs> PUBG. PUBG? I don't Whatever games that they play online nowadays. Right. Then the child doesn't want to play. Then you as a father or a leader of the house or mother, you can tell in a way to show to the child that the place of salah is greater than everything else that is in life. To that extent that you can show your anger towards the child because he does not want to perform the most important thing in his life as a Muslim. That is how we need to understand such hadith. So, Mumayyis is a time when we reach into transforming ourselves from being able to do whatever we like to understanding that there are things that we can do because it's not good. There are things that we do because it's bad. The ability to understand the concept of pahala and dosa. That is mumayis. Okay, that's all. Then the third is our akal. Eh? Our akal is the ability that we know as human beings that we can think akal. That due to that ability to think, we have no or limited uh, inability not to think. Means we need to always fill ourselves, our thoughts, our minds with some aspects of life that cause us to think. So there's this relationship between senses, 
mumayyiz and akal that result in that man one thing to uh, satisfy himself because he feels hungry right for his sight to see beauty so so the interconnectedness between all these three parts of a human being the senses the tamiz and the akal pushes men to produce pushes men to act upon his ang ang anger hunger thirst and everything else right so that's the third part of human being the akal and the akal has its all different sets of possibilities and impossibilities it's no more the issue of permissibility or impermissibility it goes into the realm of possibilities and impossibilities eh? permissibility is tamiz eh? but when it is akal possibility impossibility mission impossible right so you see mission impossible the technology always change right okay number three and before the last one allah ghazali introduced for a human being what he calls mudrikatun nubuwa this is number four this is what the sister mentioned just now the aspect of roh spirituality eh? but the term that was used by al ghazali is mudrika an nubuwa and we try to explain this mudrika means sense an nubuwa means prophet the difference between a human and other creations of Allah is that humans are created within himself or herself to be able to be attracted to the message that will guide them. There's this ability that Allah has put into them, something that attracts them to light. Eh? or dissuade them away from light because when you have this ability to be attracted to light you also have this ability to be tired of light when you like something you like durian maupun durian 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 then suddenly the price goes up you feel i don't like durian today lah right because you already have that ability to taste the zauq the ability to taste Taste in this sense is not the physical taste. It is the heart, the heart taste. Eh? When you fall in love, right? I give you durian, your lover gives you durian, the same durian, you think your lover's durian is much more sweeter than, than mine. But it also depends on the mood between you and her. Right? If on that day, bad mood, abyss, that durian is sour. Right? D24 or D27. On a good day, it becomes Musang King. Right? So why? Why does that happen? Because we have Zok. We have this taste. Mudrikatun Nubuwa. This is the term uh, Imam Ghazali used. Why he says Nubuwa? Because human being has this ability to be attracted to light or to be dissuaded away from light, then God in his greatness from the time of Adam alayhi the first man until Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he created an, a, a means, a methodology, a path of prophethood. If prophethood, if human being does not need light or guidance, God will not in his plan have sent messengers. Yeah? For, so the ability of the humans to be attracted to the message of the messengers who are representation of God as the creator who created the human being because the human being has that ability in himself to be attracted to the message of God. Understand? Yeah? Understand? Ini dah macam going around lah. If you don't understand, try to understand lah. Okay. Rumi says, I just said today, somebody sent me. If you read the Quran, looking at the letters, you know, if you read the Quran, I have a, 
Somebody send me. Very good. Rumi code. Let me try to get it. Uh, we don't too stress. Huh? We're reading a difficult text. So we're happy, happy. No problem. Huh? You can drink. Huh? You can drink. Whoever have drink can drink. Who don't have, don't drink. What's his name? Send someone else. Huh? Very good code. Uh, if you okay, I can send to okay, then you can put up. Eh? Oh, what was technology? Technology is excellent. Eh? MashaAllah. Love technology today because there's people who are helping me out. Okay. Okay. If you can put it up, if you have time, no problem. It's what Rumi says. Inshallah. Okay. We're still on the first one. Eh? Inshallah. How many minutes do we have? 15 more minutes. Only. Subhanallah. This is the problem. Lah. My problem. Okay, you look. I do 9 Okay, good. 9 So you give me another extra 10 minutes. Extra time. If you look at Quran, Rumi says, with your eyes, with your senses. We are talking about, this is actually in line with al Ghazali's conception of a human being. Eh? They have this ability, all these four different abilities. Eh? So uh, Rumi put it into practice. Uh, this is the connectedness uh, of the great sages. Uh. Why? Because they found themselves. Our problem, why don't we feel satisfied with life yet? Because we have not found the gist of who we are. We know what we have, but we do not know who we are yet. Uh, we are in that search. Lah. This is the journey lah, we are taking. That's all brings us there, lah, inshallah. You know? So Rumi as a sage, Wali Allah, is also a great Sufi. It's Mathnawi, one of the great texts. Inshallah, lah, one day we, we read Rumi, eh? then you fall in love, I become a problem. Eh, your parents all will look for me. Right? So, love in the Rumi sense is important. So he says, if you look at the Quran with your eyes, with your senses, senses, ah, we're talking about senses, means the Quran can relate to us as a human being because it can address to every different aspect of a human being. That's the greatness of the Quran. Eh? So you don't minimize it though. You expand, expand it. So the first that we learn of the Quran is what? We learn mengaji, right? How to read the Quran, the word size. Then we learn the uh, makhrajul huruf. That talks about the senses, can it talks about the usage of the mouth, the tongue, eh? the different places of the words and all these things, the breathing and everything else. Then you, you, you learn about tajweed. Then you understand the, the connectedness between words, nun, the nun sakina, and when it enters into different kind of words, you know, the magic of the word. Uh, uh, the Quran has that. Uh, the play of the words causes different sounds. Uh, and due to different sounds, they uh, different impact to the self. Uh, you know, this is still, we're talking about the first level. Uh, Rumi says, you don't have Quran with your eyes, you see words. But that does not mean there's no greatness in it. There is greatness, even in that aspect. Eh? Number one, if you look at it with your brain, with your mind, eh, you see knowledge. Uh, these are today, so much uh, people have written about the Quran, analyze the Quran, PhD, sir. You, know, you can go into so deep into the Quran. Inshallah. If you look at it with your heart, you'll see love. Uh, I you guys, jangan masuk dulu lah. Eh, you study first lah. When you love, 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 you don't want to do anything. But that mentality of what love is, is problem. This is our problem of our time. Because people have thrown away love. So they don't believe in love anymore. Because the definition and conception of love is wrong today. Uh, so Islam, the Sawuf, brings mahabbah to that beautiful level back. It brings that. Because it is natural for human beings to, to love. Today, what do we love? I ask you. We still use the term. Kan? But we... Macam malu-malu nak makan love. Kan? How many times you send WhatsApp love you? Cannot, eh? cannot, eh? cannot, eh? Why cannot? I ask you now. Why cannot? 
Why you feel is weird? Kul in kuntum tuhibun Allah, fattabi'uni yuhbibkum Allah. It's a Quranic concept. He say, O oh Muhammad, to your to to all, if they be, if they love Allah, eh, follow me. They will attain love from Allah. It's an Islamic concept. Other faith are using it, love, eh? but we are so fearful to to use love. Eh? Suddenly you, you WhatsApp WhatsApp, suddenly you want to test Allah, then uh, auto correct. Eh? And you want to 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 to, to write loose kali the ter- auto correct love you uh. loose you become love you kan suddenly ada uh, problem uh, between especially if it the other gender lah uh, right ada uh, problem kan uh, gaduh NUS kena buang after that you know hey huh? but if we lose love in our life today our life is so fast eh? we will lose a certain part of our spirituality eh? because we are too robot, robotic and that, that becomes where we become tired we will become tired why is there an increase in suicide suicide uh, suicidal acts uh, in many different different suicide does not mean a person just killing himself our suicidal cultural and food culture It's suicidal. Look at our medicine today, lah. Right, the way we eat, ah, has never, I think, ah, in the history of mankind, have never eat the way the amount that we are eating today. Right, that is our suicidal uh, path in within our food culture, right? And the pro- because we are producing food, eh, that the it goes sometimes away from how naturally organic food is supposed to be. To be, to be nurtured, to be yeah, nurtured, right? To be, to be grown. Right? So this is our time, lah. So we have to, but we have to. Wait, lah. One day we do series, love series. Okay, Shaukat, love series. When Shaukat is in love, then we do love series. That's why, see, say that, Shaukat. Okay. Last, he says, if you look at it with all your soul, you will see God. See, that's not see. Yeah, It doesn't mean see. When you you will see love, that's not mean you see love. Right? Huh? Means you love. Right? Right. When you see God, means because who is the author of the book? Right. When we read text, kan? sometimes we are so immersed in the words, we forgot there was a, an author. Kan? So you want to take lessons from the words, you forgot the lessons came from the hearts and the minds and the ink of the, of the author. So, which is greater, the author of the or, or the or, or the text? It's always the author. So, we always need to when we read any kind of text, because we are we are students who read text due to the need for assignments. Lah. this is our problem, like of our time, right? But alhamdulillah, we still have the need to do bibliographies and referencing, right? The worst thing that we want to do in an assignment is bibliography and references, right? The worst, ah, the worst. Same, ah. No, no, no. I, I will never forget my PhD journey. You know, I can, I can divert sikit, ah. Shortcut, no problem. I take two minutes. You know, when we do, we, when we write PhDs, our thesis and dissertation, right? So there will come a time, eh, after going to edits and all this, it took like to me. I think, I think, eh, I have a collection in my database, ah. Tapi I think if I can remember, at least eh, I have about 15 to 20 drafts eh, of the whole eh, PhD. So it means I had written like 20 drafts of, you know, inshallah. You see, so after going through all the process, and you have met your supervisors like years eh, of meeting him and changing, and you have seen how supervisors come and just like cross the whole pages after you have not slept for five days. You know, you felt that, right? <laughs> so, then the end process of a thesis is always ascertaining, ascertaining that the resources are right, your bibliographies are correct, and it is, you know, you know my story. I did my PhD in Melbourne. I'm supposed to, inshallah, supposed to uh, my my that my 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 exam lah means exam is that you have to submit lah. Submission. Submission is on that particular morning. Uh, at about 
two o'clock in the morning in Melbourne, or twelve or two. Uh, I received receive a call eh, from my supervisor. Never happens. I rarely supervisor calls you. Eh? They will sometimes email. He calls me. Oh, no more. So I was already happy because I finished everything. Just wanted to submit. So you say, have you checked on your bibliography? Yeah. Say so check on. because we have gone through all this. Huh? So please recheck and then call me back. So I went through. Something wrong. Huh? It's not the that bibliography. Huh? It means it's maybe my third draft or fifth draft. So I have my twentieth draft is the final draft, right? Sunday so e pu eh. And you have to understand that when we work on Microsoft Word, it's all interconnected because you do that, that thing like you join, you view it in the sense that when you, you, when you number it in, and then that particular number is going to be connected to your whole final list, right? Then you have that system that we use, uh, for, uh, inshallah. So what happened? So I check, oh, Allah, this is like you have to submit 8 o'clock in the morning. So I call him back, I said, you got something wrong. Uh. So he scolded me. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you so careless? So he says, no, you can't, you can't submit. So he was like saying, no, you can't finish your PhD. You're not going to be able to do it. You can't submit. So I was like, no more. This is like after the point of years, you know, leaving family behind. And the last day, he says, no, 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 you can't, you can't submit. I mean, give me, okay, just give me like two hours, please. I beg, uh, give me two hours or two, three hours, I'll try my very best. So Alhamdulillah, cut the story short, was able to finish the whole thing of that bibliography part in the three hours. What's the biggest lesson for that? Don't look at words. <laughs> Don't do PhD. <laughs> hey, no, no, no. Just a joke, huh? Don't take it to seriously. Parents will chase me. When you're prepared to do PhD, you, you need to understand there's a journey from a paper that is plain to 300 or 400 pages of your own words. It's not copy paste. Okay? So if you're still in the culture of copy and paste, don't do PhD. Okay. So, uh, Allah Ghazali says that. So he says, man has this, uh, human being has this ability of number one, senses. Number two, tamiz. Number three, akal. And number four, mudrika and nubuwah. That it is attracted to light and the messages of light. That is the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the creator sent from the first man until Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa prophets and messengers. Because to attract that particular ability within the hearts of men and women who can be attracted to the voice of light. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nur is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we want to say Inshma Shaita. We need to understand first who we are. How do we live? What do we need to satisfy that we have been created with? Eh? After understanding this, eh, and we have another five minutes left, right? Ten minutes, eh? Then we need to understand the inaka mayyitun. After understanding this greatness of you as the creator that has been created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the best creation among all creations, then you need to come to a realization that, that all the greatness of the worlds that you have entered, eh, senses saja have become medical science. Right? Senses saja, if you're a doctor, right? Orthopedic lah, then you become a gynae lah. Then you come, you see, just from the part of senses, scientists, science has been born. You understand the greatness of human being? You know? So if you need to understand, Aishma Sheta, understand its unlimitedness in the sense of its creator, who has created it in the best mode. Huh? But then as a human being, after realizing that, come to that point of realizing that, all this ends and will end. First, on a micro level, as a, as a person, how, however long he has given you, slowly you degrade. Slowly you will be under kafan. Right. So, but if people go on the wrong track of understanding such, eh, they will look at the end of it, forgetting the time. Of life. Huh? 
so they will take mayit. So you become depressed. So the purpose of you being created is going to be lost. So understanding such a simple text needs a very careful analysis of the depth of who is speaking the text, who is writing the text, and to whom and by whom this text was revealed to. So when it is Jibril who mentioned to Rasulullah, Aish ma shaita, means Jibril has seen from one end to the end of creation and creatures. Pre-human beings. Huh? We need to understand the dynamics. Huh? Then understanding who received it, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, a person who has lived in his time in his life, who have crossed the boundaries that Jibril himself had not been able to cross. Right. So when Rasulullah received this, Aish ma shaita, has he a complete life? He has. Right. During his lifetime, he was able to trans transcend. To the greatest level possible, humanly possible, because Allah does not have a place, no limitation for Allah lah. For humans, there's limitation. But Rasulullah sallallahu entered into the limitedness, the limited of the unlimited lah. Rasulullah, that's the end. Lah. Cannot go anywhere else for a human, for a creation. Lah. Huh? Means if we try to understand this nasiha. Of Jibril to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, quoted by Imam Al Ghazali in his text Ayyul Walad. Inshallah, Aish ma shi'ta Rasulullah is Aish, has really lived as he wills, as he pleases. He had done that, right? Hey, physically, Mecca, Medina. We know how difficult Mecca was. We know pre-prophethood. We know about forty years of his life how difficult it was. So he understood that the value of life. Life is painful. That's part of the biggest lesson of the prophet, of the prophets, from Adam until Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Painful life, right? We, our life, say painful, stressful. stressful. Okay, lah. We take stress, don't take pain. Lah. Very good, very good. Anas is stress now. He says, okay. So you guys have to de-stress him. But realize. That at the end of this life, there is death. Yeah? When there is death, means there is an ability for all that you want to attain, it might be able to be achieved or it will not be able to achieve. You will not be able to achieve it. So there's a stop. Yeah? So Mayit is that idea of everything stops. Time stops. So you say, Aish ma shaita, fa inna kamayitun, understand the greatness of that, that advice. Eh? Then he says, wa ahbib man shaita, fa inna kamufarikuhu. Wa ahbib means love, as you please. See, Jibril eh, advising Rasulullah about love. You say, cannot talk about love. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I ask you, if we understand Rasulullah's love, what is Rasulullah's love? How does Rasulullah understand this? Hmm. How does Rasulullah try to to optimize love in his life during his lifetime? I just take one story lah. Eh? One day, Sayyidatina Aisha. Eh? She said, Sayyidatina Aisha, we know Rasulullah's wife, right? After the, the demise of Sayyidatina Khadija, right? So Sayyidatina Aisha says, I do not feel any jealousy to any of the wives of the Prophet, eh, except to Khadija. But the fact that Aisha never lived with Khadija, because Khadija passed away before even Rasulullah married Aisha. But why? That is love. Huh? Eh? Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam continuously will feed the friends of Khadija in remembrance of Khadija. Sometimes we do tahlil right now, right? Why we do tahlil? Because we remember our our fathers. And now people say cannot do tahlil. Rasulullah did tahlil for Khadija. 
giving makan lah. Right. Tahlil means what? Recitation of la ilaha illallah. That is tahlil. Tasbih means recitation of tasbih subhanallah. Tahmid means recitation of alhamdulillah. Haukalah means recitation of la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. These are all terms. So don't, don't stop lah. Let's do lah. Hey, no problem. Okay, five minutes. Okay. Wa ahbib man shi'ta. Nanti we continue lah next time. Don't worry. Wa ahbib man shi'ta. Fa innaka mufariquhu. So first, we have to instill love. Find love first lah. First, who do we love? That's the biggest question lah. Eh? And what is love? Who do we love? We have to follow Rasulullah SAW. Number one, the journey is always to the greatest lover. Nabi Muhammad and Allah are lovers. Mahbub and Habib. Habibullah is Rasulullah. Nabi Ibrahim received Khalilullah, best friend. BFF. BFF, Nabi Ibrahim with God. Best friend forever. Khalilullah. Khalil means best friend. Tapi Rasulullah received Habibullah, love. So you create apps ah for lovers. Now Facebook only BFF kan? Right? Yeah, I don't know. Don't create. I cannot. Facebook I think cannot create lah. Because I don't know. This wrong advice. Delete this part. Edit lah. Edit. You see how difficult today we want to talk about love? Because people fear love today. Yeah. So we have to put it in the right perspective. Inshallah lah. We will talk greater about this. Should we un answer this question? Okay. Wah, oh, ada so many question. You? Insyaallah. Okay, very good. Okay, good. So we will end today by our aim. Our topic is the vessel can today. How to purify it? Okay. My point is that through reading text, we will be able to find many answers. Eh? Answers can be found as guidelines. Number one, you okay, do this lah, then becomes this lah. It becomes medi medi med med medicine lah. Eh? Medica medicational approach means take Panadol one, then tomorrow you relief, relief, not settle. Right. In text, in such text that we're reading, it provides so that those kind of answers. How do you provide? Understand life, understand who you are. Understand the makeup, the magnificence of who you are, all these kind of things. And then from those words, with regards to how do you love, then we have others that we will go to, inshallah. So the vessel, what is the vessel we're talking about? Is that four that we're talking about just now? The senses, the tamiz, the akal, the mudrikatun nubuwa. We have just been introduced. From the perspective of Al Ghazali, there could be thousands of other writers that have their own conceptions. But we, because of time and our own limitedness of knowledge, we are able to focus on one scholar that, that provides us this disability. So, next process is to purify. First, our answer is number one is to understand the magnificence. Don't always think of it as dirty. Look at this from the Alhamdulillah aspect. Be thankful first. Eh? Be thankful with what we have. That we have been created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah alam bisawab. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, sir. May Allah bless you and protect you always. <coughs> okay, um, I wanted to do a summary, but I think that we could uh, give more time to the Q&A because we have a long question. So for tonight's session, we actually looked onto one single ayat lah, of one of one single uh, sentence that was found in the book that uh, Ustaz Faisal recommended, which is uh, al Walet. So it shows the how deep the, the knowledge of the, the first scholars are and how much we can um, uh, explain and break it into different aspects. And yet one sentence took so long just to understand and I appreciate. So inshallah, we look forward to future sessions with Ustaz so he may share with us more beautiful gems from this book, inshallah. So now we will move on to the second and final, actually the only Q&A session. So once again, if you have any questions, please, please feel free to send in your questions using the chat function, either publicly or privately to me, whichever way you prefer. For those who prefer asking the question directly, please use the raise hand function and unmute yourself when called upon.
Hey, Ustaz. So, um, actually, we have a few questions in the chat right now. Let me read to you the first one. I think you saw it already and you uh, addressed it a little bit already. So, it says here, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, Ustaz. Pray you and your family are well. How do we purify our vessels with the tools given within our society that we live in? So, multicultural, multi-religious, cosmopolitan, modern, fast-paced and materialistic. <laughs> Sorry, sir, you're muted. You need can you hear me? You hear me? Can, can. Can, okay. So the question is, how do we purify our vessel with the tools given within our society that we live in? Multicultural, multi-religious, cosmopolitan, modern, fast-paced, materialistic. So many things. One line, I cannot finish one and a half hours. You give me six concepts. <laughs> eh? So we can take six days. The easiest way to answer this is number one, first, understand who we are, appreciate first. Eh, appreciate. Stress never stops from the time of Nabi Adam in Jannah. Never stops. Eh, stress is whatever culture, whatever multi variants of creations that, were, that is around, there will be stresses that will disturb all of us. Right? So all these jargons, first, do not take it and understand it from a negative standpoint. Embrace life. So when we talk about multiculturalism, multi-religious, cosmopolitan, modern, fast paced materialistic, this needs to be understood from a positive overview first. And embrace life positively. Why do you start prayer by saying, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin, while at that particular moment, you are having... Uh, greatest problems in your life. You still go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the wajib recitation of Al-Fatiha, which starts with the beautiful name of Allah being the most gracious and most merciful and Allah thanking Allah for with Alhamdulillah. So, how do we purify in these difficult times in this, in this society that we are? Number one, go back to basic of thankfulness being an individual. Number one, Number two, we talk about the four different aspects of a human being. Adjust it well in the sense that it can live within the moment. Eh? Your senses today, your taste, you want to eat durian, eat lah. So that's our thankfulness for being multicultural. Right? But, wasat lah, be balanced. Don't eat, eat, eat it until after that you become diabetic. Right? So there's always balance, the issue of balancing between one, per, one need and the other precautions. There's always this balance. But don't, don't go. The, the, the most difficulty of our time is to find the balance. So how do you create the balance? You have knowledge. You have the sharia. At the end of it, you have yourself. You know your balance might not be the same as your friend's balance. So, but when we when you live in a community, you balance yourself based upon the institutions and the precepts that have been set by your community. So, Alhamdulillah, we have in Singapore Muiz, we have in Singapore mosque institutions, we have our walk off, we have our system zakat, we have everything else that we have. Live within that that have been created. Appreciate that first, sir. and then we are not the first one who's going to live now as a Muslim in this moment. As many other of our, our, our scholars, our, our fathers, our parents who have lived and lived successfully as a Singaporean, at the same time as a Muslim, fulfillingly. So no problem. Okay? If you have stress, you meet Shaukat. Okay, That's the first part. See, you see his smile? Smile. Rasulullah said tabassum. Smile. So start. You have to start changing yourself before we want to change system or others. Okay, number two, question. Okay, so this is a slightly longer one. I'll try my best to summarize it. So the questioner mentions, um, you mentioned that the experience of life is like a teacher. But what if the experience of one's life is making one further away from perhaps from God, uh, perhaps to the, to the belief in God? For example, some people believe there is no God as they see a lot of suffering in their personal lives and around them. The rationale is, if there is God, then why is there suffering in the world? And um, why, why, why did not God stop it 
or stop bad things from happening to them. Uh, we digest our experience, our experience of life through the akal by Islam. But Islam, we also see another bigger component, the soul. In Islam, we see another bigger component, which is the soul. So in essence, right, and what he's trying to ask here is that, how do we answer this logically to a disbeliever of God while simultaneously not dismissing their personal suffering or their observance of suffering in this world? Ustaz, do you get that, Ustaz? Sorry, do you need me to summarize it further? <laughs> it's, quite, it's rather a long question. You have to mute it, Ustaz. Sorry. Okay. Okay, thank you. Number one, to the person who has written this. I, I think the person who has written this Number one is a good writer lah. Eh? Within these few minutes, he is able to to write this, mashallah. I'm trying to still understand the big question. Eh? How to answer this logically to a belief, this belief of God was simultaneously dismissing their personal suffering or their observance of suffering in the world. Perhaps to them, the experience of life is subjective. Objective to understand. Now, you got that answer. Perhaps to them, the experience of life is subjective. But for us, it's objective to understand his greatness. So now, how do we bring this message that we have obtained to them? Right? So because people do not... The writer has said, the questioner has said, some people believe there is no God. As they see, there's a lot of suffering. Okay. Number two. So he took John Locke. Strip the rational soul of his greatest attributes. What's really the position of consciousness? The rational factor. They never wish to distinguish passion rule. That's a superstition rule, fanatics from rational and gentleman. That's John Locke. John Locke itself, philosophy, you have to take one semester. That's the philosophy. I did, I did. I remember reading John Locke, my degree, which is 20 years ago, sorry. So we read, we read Western philosophy. Which I can never, can never understand until today. Save the Russian so Okay lah, simple answer first lah. Eh? Nanti insyaAllah we'll, we'll compile all these questions throughout the sessions that we, are, we will have. InsyaAllah we'll hope Allah SWT will guide us. Eh, for us to to provide better, better answers. Lah. Not answers lah, replies. I think the, 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 the good intention of the questioner is that how do we logically explain to those who disbelieve of God in the expect of sufferings. If God is perfect, why then we suffer? Right. Number one is that the world is, is part of a journey. The world is not the end. For those who don't believe, too, they believe that there is a start of creation. Because they see a baby being born, right? They see the process of how a baby is, is, is created, right? So there's always a start. A start, that means there's a no, no being. La. Then due to the interaction of humans, there's a start. La. So due to that logic also, we understand due everything, there's a start, there must be an end. But the only thing that we need to expand on this idea of N is that for for the greatness of God looking at the greatness of the universe that we see the stars the millions of planets all over this small little world cannot be the end doesn't make sense because there's too many that God has just left in the sky for us not to know because at the time that he's given us is so limited for us to be able to know all of this that he that one has created right so if life is the end so what's the use of all those marvelousness of the universe so because i see shaukat his background is like the, the universe right to understand light also is so difficult to understand so to people who are searching for this, of course, Hidayah is not in our hands, but we have the ability to engage, lah, engage in this kind of, this kind of looking at at the the earth, lah, 
looking at the creation itself, uh, the unlimitedness of it shows that the short time period that is given in this life cannot be the end of life. There must be afterlife. And that this afterlife must be able to sustain unlimitedness. Uh, for us then to understand who God is. Because God is timeless. The world is time. God is timeless. So suffering is needed because nature of all creations, there are pain. Want to makan durian, can open the, the thing painful, you know, the thorns. Huh? So pain is part of life. Lah. And everybody understands pain. You don't even have to be a Muslim or non-Muslim. Human beings understand pain from the first day they are created. So pain is natural. It's part of life. So don't equate God to only suffering. Because suffering is not God, but suffering is life. So start there first. Uh, inshallah, two more sessions, we'll engage, inshallah. Okay, I would like to take this opportunity um, to ask if anyone of you would like to ask a question to Ustaz directly. Please use the raise hand function. Is there any of you who would like to ask Ustaz a question directly? You can raise, you can use the raise hand function. Um, okay, if not, you'll move on to the last question for today. Uh, okay, Ustaz, this is a question. How would you, just now you mentioned about love and how nowadays the, the concept of love has changed so much to the extent that we are, we are afraid to use it, right? <laughs> so, Hustas, how would you simply explain what love truly is and how can we learn to love um, properly? Okay, first, this is your question, right? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but before that, from the group chat, I see Brother Fauzan. Thank you, Ustaz. He says, sorry for long. Hey, no, no problem. You know, I, we appreciate you typing the question. Eh? So don't, don't apologize. And we understand the quest of wanting to understand something. Sometimes we just have to blur everything out. Sometimes I write long WhatsApp. My friend will do like it. But sometimes I don't get enough to, uh, to get them to understand what I'm trying to say. You know? It's fine. It's fine. No issue. We want to make it as such that we are in this together, you know, it's a journey. So anybody with anything can. Shaukat's question about love, I think we will pick it up next week because I have not finished about love, what Allah Ghazali says. We were just going into the second line. Eh? So inshallah, next week we will talk, inshallah, much more deeply into what constitutes love in Islam. Eh? Now, what is love mean? Uh, very scary. He says, love as you please, but remember, indeed one day you'll be separated from, from it. You know? So this itself is, a, is an ocean to understand. So what we will bring, inshallah, next week is what is love. And then the dynamics of the understanding of love and the terms that are associated to love in Islam. We have hope, we have wood. We have aishq. We have all these different terms that relates itself to this idea of what we generally as human understand L-U-V. Eh, L-U-V. L-O-V-E. L-O-V-E. Me WhatsApp has spoiled you. Uh, problem. So very good question, uh, Shaukat. I know your question. Eh? Inshallah, we will dwell into it. Next, next change, next change. Sure. Hey, next week. Our next session. Now. Okay, thank you, Ustaz. So, if there's no more question, let me just check the chat. Um, okay, so if there's no more question, thank you, Ustaz, for all the knowledge that you have shared with us. It has been the greatest honor for all of us to be in your presence and to seek knowledge from you. And so, this brings us to the end of our second session. But before we close, do allow me to share a few announcements. Firstly, we'll be having a book giveaway for an individual who gives a meaningful reflection on today's session. A G2G notebook is also up for grabs for a second winner. We would love to know what the content shared during the G2G, G2G session manifests itself in your everyday life. You may submit your reflection by dropping us a DM on our IG handle by next Wednesday, 16 September 2020, 2359. That was some deadline. Eh? <laughs> <already>. <laughs> So, uh, inshallah, the winners shall be announced and contacted by the end of next week. 
Uh, secondly, we would like to remind you that our next session for the Voyage series will be during week 8 on the 8th of October, same time, same day, entitled The Crew Forging Companionships. Also, the start actually links to love also. <laughs> so, um, in the meantime, before our next session, we will uh, we'll be making a short detour to stop by the port for a session sometime during recess week in two weeks' time, inshallah. This session will be separate from our voyage series and seeks to provide a practical framework on setting intentions in our everyday lives. Further details regarding that particular session will be provided uh, on our social media platforms in due time, inshallah. So, okay, before we end off tonight's session, may we request Ustaz to give a closing du'a? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali sayyidina Muhammad. Salatan tunjina biha min jami'i al-ahwal illa fata qudiyana bi jami'i al-hajat wa tutahhiruna biha min jami'i al-sayyi'at wa tarfa'una biha innaka ala darajat wa tubalighuna bi qasr ghayat min al-akhirat ila hayat wa ba'd. Min alladhina yubay'unaka inna ma yubay'un Allahu billahi wa qa'idihim. Wa man nakatha fa inna ma yakatha li nafsi wa man afa bima hada ala Allah. سيدنا من عظيم الله محدنا بهدى وجعلنا ممن يسار في رضا ولا تودنا وليا سوى تجعلنا من خلف أمرك وعصر حزبنا الله نعم الوكيل نعم المولى نعم النصير ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم صلى الله على خير خلق سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين تقبل الله منكم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته استاذ so Alhamdulillah with that, this evening's event has come to an end. We thank you all for joining us and being part of this blessed gathering. We hope to see you following the upcoming D2G sessions, inshallah. May Allah continue to grant us many more of such opportunities of being in the presence of our teachers and the people who are close to Allah and His beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that we may always be reminded of Allah and our hearts may be continuously purified by being in their presence. Before we disperse, we would like to apologize on behalf of the D2G committee for any shortcomings on our part throughout the night. Please share your feedback on today's sessions through the link provided to you in the chat as it will help us improve and serve you better. Do follow us on our Instagram page and Telegram channel which have been collated on the card link also shared in the chat. To receive regular updates for program de details, key takeaways from our sessions as well as other useful information. For those interested in watching last week's recording, as well as the recordings from last year's The Power Series, you can head down to our YouTube channel where they have been uploaded. So let us end tonight with Azdeh Kafara and Surah al -Asr. Thank you, good night, and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.